Hey guys, Clem here, and welcome back to my Node.js crash course. In this video, I'm going to be talking about handlebars. In the previous video, I talked about the EJS template engine, and I showed you how it's structured, showed you how the syntax works. In this video, I'm going to be talking about a more popular, in my opinion, handlebars engine. And I'm going to show you how it generally works and how to make use of it in a sort of efficient way, I will say. So I already discussed what a template engine is in the previous video and how a template engine actually works works and why we need a template engine. If you want to watch all that, go back to the previous video in this series. So we are going to just go ahead and talk about how to use the handlebars template engine in Node.js. So let's go ahead right now. The first step, of course, is to initialize our package.json because we need to download an external npm package so that we can make use of handlebars. So to do that, I'll just do npm init dash y to create my package.json and then I just do npm install express hyphen handlebars. Uh, this is what handlebars package for express is called. There are other handlebars packages out there for other server creation packages, but to use handlebars with express.js, which is the server creation package that we're using currently, we need to use express hyphen handlebars. Awesome. We also need to install express, of course. So I'll do npm install express. Awesome. Now that Express has been installed, let's go ahead and show how to actually use handlebars. So it's, this is very similar to using EJS, but just a few changes here and there that makes handlebars more robust, I will say. The first step is to just do a const. I'll call this Express handlebars is equal to require express hyphen handlebars. And I actually want to export a particular method from Express handlebars. So I'll just Take this out and destructure the create method from express handlebars. So I'll say const express to bring in express, of course. And then I'll say const app to execute the express module. Awesome. So the next step, of course, is to then say const handlebars is equal to that I need to execute the create method. And by executing the create method, I have access to the engine property. And that engine property is what I'll put in my app.engine. So this is a new method for the app that we haven't seen yet. This is specifically made for Express to support templating engines. And what engine do I want it to support? Handlebars. And what handlebars engine is it supporting? It's supporting the hbs.engine handlebar. Perfect. So what's the next step? I need to set the view engine again by saying view engine. And this is like a key value pair sort of arrangement. The first argument is the key we want, which is the view engine. And the next argument will be the name, which is handlebars. So first of all, we're going to assign an engine to it. And then we're going to set the view engine to the assigned engine. And then we come here and the next step is we want to determine where the views will sit in. In EGS, this is sort of automatic, but we have some leeway to change this. I believe you can also change it in EGS, the view location, but we can also change it in handlebars as well. So we'll set the views here to the views directory. Note the dot forward slash to show relative path. And we haven't yet made the views directory here. I'm going to do that right now by clicking here and making a views folder, right? So the next step is to say app.get. And I want to just create a, a simple route with a request response in the argument of the callback function. And in this case, I'll say res.render. And I want to render a home page. In this case, it's not going to be expected home.ejs like in the last video. It's going to be expected home.handlebars in the views folder. And I want to pass this, pass an argument. I'm going to call this name, or let me just make it in a separate, uh, I'm going to make this in a separate uh, variable. I'll call this name equal to Clem. I'm just going to say data, right? This is the convention to make it an object literal and say name is Clem. And then I'll pass in the data, right? And what I want to do next is I want to say, of course, I need to create the server by making a port equal to 8080 and then saying app dot listen on the port. And when the port has been opened and the server has been created, I have a callback function here that says console.log listening on port and do the template formation port variable here. Awesome. So there are a couple of things that are going to go wrong with this. Even if I have my home handlebars here, let me just create the home function. It's going to be home 
not .ejs, but .handlebars, right? I'm gonna make a quick template here. Let's call this my users. And then I wanna output the variable here, clem. And to do this, I'm just gonna make this in a h1 tag here. I can make it in any tag I want to make it. And I'm gonna use the same ejs format that was like kind of confusing. In this case, it's gonna be three curly brackets, open and close. And I'm gonna call this name, right? Which is gonna output clem. This is looking pretty good. So we have our home handlebar set. We have our server set. So what could go wrong? Well, something's gonna go wrong when we try to go to the home route. But let's first of all, see if the setup is right. So we do node server and we can see that we're listening on port 8080. Let's try to reload the page. Reload this, you see I get an error. No such file or directory open in this weird path. We have a views folder, but it's expecting something called layouts and there should be like a main that handlebars in the layouts. Now, why is this? The reason is the way handlebars works, it works a little different from the regular EJS, especially the express handlebars. It expects a unique layout at all times that actually shows the contents of the page we want to render. So how do we have that unique layout? That unique layout is a HTML page or a handlebars page in this instance that is always gonna be rendered. And then our content is gonna be embedded inside of the layout content. It's a lot of talk, but let me describe it by showing you how that actually works. So in this case, I'm gonna have a layout folder. I'll call this layouts. And I'm gonna have a main.handlebars. I'm gonna copy and paste something in here or not yet. I'll just make the template here. I'll call this my shop, for example, and I'll just do this, my body, this body here. This tells handlebars that every single content we wanna render in every page is gonna take make use of this general layout, right? And to show you that this works, it means that since I'm gonna have my whole body in here, I don't need to have all these other tags in here. So I can take out every single thing and I can just render only the content that I need to. I can just make a, make, make a div tag or of some sorts. Make a div real quick, a div. And I'll just like render like a name in there and I can style the div anyhow I want to style the div. So I'll just leave it like this for now though. And then, you know, I don't think, I don't even think I need to save. I just need to come here, reload my page. I can see I have clump here, really easy. I can come in here and I can say, not into the main handlebars again. I can just say in home handlebars, my name is, and then show that this works. My name is Clem. So this is how handlebars works. And in the next video, I'm gonna be talking about, still on template engines, we're not done yet, <laughs> very soon, I promise. Talking about how to do conditional rendering on your template engine as well as for loops on your template engine. That'll be in the next video.